Hello, my name is Philip Van Smith II. I'm an incarcerated person serving life without parole. I'm going to talk about the importance of self-advocacy while doing time. When we think of an advocate, we envision an outside help covering the strings of fate in our direction. We see advocates and savvy attorneys, criminal justice crusaders, or powerful politicians. It's easy to view advocates as saviors because when you're in prison, it's hard to imagine saving yourself. In general, incarceration magnifies our sense of helplessness by forcing us into a state of dependency. We must depend on the prison to supply clothes, food, shelter, and sometimes safety. Likewise, we depend on our families to send money so we can buy products that prisons do not supply. Incarcerated people are forced to rely on others to do things they can't do. After living this way for a prolonged period of time, it's easy to lose sense of our independence. Lack of independence can lead to low self-confidence. When faced with a difficult task, someone with low self-confidence will find it easier to rely on someone else. Now, before I accuse you of being that person, I'll accuse myself. I've used all the excuses. I can't do it, or it's too hard. How about nobody else cares? Why should I? So if you're listening to this podcast and you're brave enough to admit that self-imposed negativity has hindered you, please understand that I've been there too. A judge sentenced me to life without parole for murder at the ripe old age of 24, long before I had experienced life. I'm now 45, still incarcerated, but my accomplishments are many. Most notably, I co-authored the Prison Resources Repurposing Act with Timothy Johnson, a friend and fellow writer. The Prison Resources Repurposing Act, or what we call the PRRA, is a legislative proposal and bill for North Carolina that will extend the lease to those serving life without parole. Currently, lifers in North Carolina are not eligible for the lease. If enacted, the PRRA will help lifers earn freedom after completing behavioral, educational, and vocational goals over a 20-year period. Instead of increasing the prison budget, the PRRA will reorganize existing rehabilitative programs into a tiered structure to maximize personal development. We believe the PRRA will change the prison culture for the better by giving long-term incarcerated people a positive goal to strive for while lowering institutional violence. Tim and I wrote the proposal just before the COVID-19 pandemic, which forced our institution into lockdown. At the time, all we had was an idea, no knowledge of how to write legislation or how to get it to legislators. Self-doubt ate me alive. We were literally attempting the impossible. Eventually, we found books to teach us how to write legislation. Some men in our cell block had copies of existing bills that were used as a template in formatting our own. After months of hard work, we were ready to send it off. Back then, we had no advocates. We wrote to the Sentencing Project, the Equal Justice Initiative, the Marshall Project, the ACLU, book authors, any and everyone. Sadly, not one person or organization responded. Still, we pressed on. In 2021, we presented the PRRA to the National Alliance for Higher Education in Prison during an online conference. This later, 18 North Carolina House representatives sponsored the PRRA as House Bill 697. Lack of bipartisan support killed the bill for that session. But in 2022, the North Carolina Law Review published our full proposal. State House Representatives sponsored the PRRA again in 2023 in House Bill 126, but it failed once more. Despite our numerous failures, we gained confidence with each step. You see, when you start from the bottom, each toehold propels you upward. No matter how slow the going, every movement is progress. Over time, we gained the support we needed. We accomplished it by continuing to write letters and building our social network. It wasn't easy. I remember sending letters to the North Carolina General Assembly. It was Tim's job to write the letters. After signing them, I sealed 126 letters in one day. I licked so many envelopes that my tongue was numb for a week. Not one legislator responded. But now, 
people contact us to ask how they can help. Our minor successes are a testament to our dedication. Change takes time, especially criminal justice reform. But without our initiative, no one would have had reason to help us. We needed to make the first move by acting as our own advocates to forward an idea people could believe in. Now, you may be listening to me talk and thinking that I'm somehow different from you, but I'm not. I once failed to see my potential. I broke the rules. I spent time in the hole for fighting and disrespecting staff. The only difference between me and others may be that I realized how systemic problems contributed to my behavior. I chose to stop allowing prison culture to dictate my actions. That doesn't make me better than anyone. It simply means that I'm striving to be my best self, not giving in to what others or society says I should be. The best change that I've made to my personal life was identifying how to right the systemic wrongs I once fell victim to. First, I studied how contemporary punishments for crime drive the violent prison culture. Like most states, North Carolina adopted mandatory minimum sentencing laws in the mid 1990s. Not only did this move create the age of mass incarceration, it eliminated parole, which allowed incarcerated people to earn release through their own merit. Without parole, people serving long sentences lost the incentive to live virtually in prison. That was my problem. Serving up without parole stole my purpose. I truly felt as if I was living to die. Others who were serving 20 to 30 year sentences seemed to feel the same. This feeling of hopelessness dictated how we behaved. We had no reason to do the right thing. Most people in society can't understand why this problem is so detrimental. Some believe incarcerated people should strive to be better simply because we are in prison. These beliefs fail to factor in the socioeconomic deficiencies that lead them into prison. Also, incarceration places one in a far worse situation of poverty forcing the incarcerated to focus on survival versus working toward personal betterment. Without early release as an incentive, some incarcerated people would do whatever it takes to survive in prison. And surviving here is not easy. Most job assignments in North Carolina pay only 40 cents a day, barely enough to buy a tube of generic toothpaste. A person trying to survive in prison needs another income to buy necessities. If they have no one on the outside to send money, survival can mean selling drugs or extorting other prisoners. Many prison officials will not attribute the presence of drugs in prison with the lack of financial stability. It's far easier to push the narrative that prisons sell drugs because it's in our nature to do so. My experience has proved otherwise. Living off of 40 cents a day is impossible, even in prison. My family sends money when they can, but it isn't often. Unlike people in the world, we can't apply for college or a better job. We have to take the minimal opportunities prisons offer. For me, hustling became my only means of survival. And I wasn't alone in doing the wrong thing to make ends meet. Everyone struggles in prison. The competition for money, coupled with hopelessness caused by endless mandatory minimum sentences, creates a counterculture where illegal behavior becomes the acceptable norm. When incarcerated people must resort to drug dealing and extortion to provide for themselves, violence becomes the necessary means to remain prosperous. Luckily, I found an escape from that negative cycle. I began working in correction enterprises in 2015. I earned a little over $15 a week for 40 hours, but it was enough to buy what I needed to survive. Many will argue that working for $15 a week is a lot like slave labor. I won't disagree, but everyone must decide what life path is best for them. I should have been paid more. I was worth more. But after four years, I earned an apprenticeship in graphic design. The skills I gained were priceless. Also, I didn't worry about going to the hole or having to fight. I took advantage of a good situation, and I felt good about the person I was becoming. I learned to live without hustling. My path of change laid the foundation of the PRRA with a strong focus on education and working a trade that could be used upon release. If I could do it, anybody could. I learned another lesson working in correction enterprise. 
any effort to succeed had to originate within me. I had to arrive at work on time. I had to complete each job. I had to develop discipline to work 40 hours a week to earn a decent salary. It was on me and only me to improve my situation. It's easy to search for a day to either help or blame when things don't go my way. They won't pay me enough. They won't give me a better job. They can't keep me locked up forever. They, they, they. Well, I asked myself the question, who is they? And so I looked into the mirror and I said, you are they. In most instances, I created my own problems. On the flip side, I had all the solutions. I am the sole controller from which my circumstances grow. If I want something good to happen for me, I have to make it happen. That realization became my fresh start. I learned to be my own advocate, and now I have the resume to prove it. I need you to look into the mirror and see in yourself the person who can do it all. Take responsibility. You are not helpless, even when the path to success does not exist. You are much stronger than you know, even when incarceration makes you feel weak. You can accomplish anything. All you have to do is fight for it. Never give up. Don't wait for a savior to drop out of the sky. Find a way to save yourself. The bill Tim and I wrote may not become law anytime soon, but our confidence won't let us stop fighting. We are the greatest advocates for our cause, and we will change our world for the better. One triumph at a time. Become your own advocate. It might just change your life.